Welcome back. All right, so we have a review tonight, and then, of course, we have the power rankings. I'm wearing a Team Canada jersey, because why not? Uh, this is a 1972 can Now, it wasn't made in 1972. We just be clear on that. It's not an original or anything, but it's still, it's a, it's a, it's a fun uh, recreation of the 1972 article. All right, so we're going to start things off talking about the Vegas Golden Knights and the Florida Panthers. Uh, Samsonov versus Bobrovsky in this one. Uh, Bennett to Rodriguez near miss. The lone shot on net was for Florida five minutes in. Didn't indicate how crazy this game was going to be. Uh, there were some slow games tonight, though. Not going to lie. There were some games that, uh, yeah, there wasn't a whole lot going on. Panthers um, had the first six shots on net before Vegas got one. Vegas got one right around at the halfway point. Uh, the Panthers pressed with nine minutes left. Colasar to Pearson near miss. The Panthers pressed with five and a half minutes left. But Vegas had a good finish to the period, including... Tanner Pearson scoring from Nick Watt, 1927. I believe that's Pearson's second goal of the season already. It's 1-0 Vegas after one. The lead does not last that long into the second. Reinhardt gets one from a sharp angle. Lundell and Ekblad with the assists at 109. Panthers press at three minutes. The shots are 3-1 to one for Florida. Four minutes into the period. Vegas presses at seven minutes. We get a power play for the Golden Knights. That's killed off. Vegas presses after it's done. The shots are 11 to 8 for Vegas with seven and a half minutes left. Panthers press with seven minutes left, but at 14-15, Colasar. Uh, Pearson kind of flings it at the net. Colasar tips it in. So that's why you just shoot it at the net. Uh, Nick Raw with his second assist and the secondary assist on this one of 14-15. Panthers press with three and a half minutes left with 146 left. The Panthers get a power play and they score on it. At 19:20, it's Bennett from Verhage and Lundell. So after two periods of play, it's a 2-2 tie. Exciting game. Third period, Panthers have an early two-on-one. That's tonight. We get a power play for, for Florida. That's killed off. Pucks cleared out. And then at seven minutes and 30 seconds, Howden steals, goes around Bobrovsky and puts it in the net, and gives Vegas their third lead of the game. The shots though are seven to one Florida at the half. So that was the only shot Vegas had in the first half. And then at 12:43. Uh, Lou Sterinen ties the game from Reinhardt and Ekblad. Uh, the Panthers then look for the lead. Vegas presses with five and a half minutes left. Uh, William Carlson had a three-on-two chance that saved. It's 3-3 after the third period. We're going to overtime. Uh, Panthers control early. Roz denied on a rush. Forsling and Bennett trying. They can't quite end it. And then at 4.43, just as I was getting ready to write the word shootout on the board, uh, Forsling buries one from the side of the net. Bennett and Reinhardt with the assists. The final score on this one, 4-3 in overtime for the Florida Panthers. They go to 4-2-1 on the season. Vegas, 3-2-1. The shots, 13-7 Florida in the first. 15-13 Florida in the second. 15-5 Florida in the third. 6-1 Florida in the overtime. They outshoot Vegas, 49-26. Power plays, Vegas 0-1. for 1, Florida 1-2. One for 2. The hits, 25-17 for Vegas. Uh, Samsonov, 45 saves on 49 shots. Bobrovsky, 23 saves on 26 shots. Next up, uh, New York and the Toronto Maple Leafs. So the Rangers, uh, Shesterkin and Nett versus Stolarz. Uh, Zibanejad has a 2-on-1 chance that saved, but that's the only shot the Rangers had early on. Shots are 3-1 to one Toronto at 3 minutes. The Leafs press at 6 minutes. Camp has a net feed that's picked off. Matthews couldn't bury one in close. And then Lafreniere at 11:44 opens the scoring for the Rangers. Trocek and Mancini with the assists. There's Mancini with another point. Rangers then go to the power play. The Leafs kill that off. One shot on net on that Rangers power play. The Leafs press with five and a half minutes left. But the Rangers come out with a one nothing lead after the first. Second period. Leafs press at a minute and a half. The Rangers get pinned, but they're blocking the net pretty well. Uh, there's a press then by the Rangers at four minutes. Trocek can't bury one in close. Uh, the shots are four to two Toronto, eight and a half minutes in. The Rangers were in the midst of drawing a panel or drawing a power play. And during the delayed call, Kreider scores Zibanejad and Riley Smith with the assists at 9.08. Uh, the Leafs then press to respond. There's a power play for Toronto. That's killed off. We get a post for Domi on a fast break. Uh, power play for the Leafs. That's killed off. Three shots on net, and the Rangers clear it out after. Carrick can't bury one in close. With 1.53 left, the Rangers get a power play. So that extends to the end of the period. It's 2-0 Rangers after two. And, of course, the Leafs kill off that final seven seconds to start the third. Nylander's then denied on a rush before at three minutes and 40 seconds. Matthews buries a wraparound. The assist to Ekman, Larson, and Nyes. The shots on net are four apiece at five minutes. The Leafs press at nine minutes. Matthews has a backhander that gets saved by Shesterkin. 
The Leafs draw a power play. Robertson's denied from the slot. That power play's killed off. Two shots on net. Shots are 14 to 7. Toronto with four minutes left. The goalie pull happened with a minute and a half left. Toronto had opportunities, but Kreider hits the empty net at 19 minutes from Zibanejad and Riley Smith. And then at 1946, Panarin hits the empty net from Cooley and Keandre Miller. So it's a 4 to 1 win for the Rangers. They go to 4 0 oh, 1 on the season. The Leafs drop to 3 and 2. Shots on net 10 7 Rangers in the first, 10 to 8 Toronto in the second, 18 to 11 Toronto in the third. They outshoot the Rangers 35 to 29. Rangers 0 for 2 on the power play. Toronto 0 for 3. The hits 20 to 19 Toronto. Shesterkin saves 34 out of 35. Stolars, another good night for him, but in a losing effort, 25 saves on 27 shots. Just didn't have the goal support because Igor was at the other end. He does cause that problem for other teams. All right, next up, Washington and New Jersey, the game with all the goals in it. Uh, tonight was not a high-scoring night. Uh, so it's Thompson versus Markstrom. Uh, Ovechkin has a wrister. That's held. Caps press. The Devils block. The Devils press at four minutes. And when they get their first shot, it goes in. It's Howla from Nason and Tatar at 443. The Caps would look to answer, and they do. On a two-on-one rush, Wilson scores from McMichael at 601. I think he's got a four-game goal-scoring streak going on here. Uh, and then at 1014, McMichael gives Washington their first lead of the night. Wilson and Chikrin with the assists, and the Caps press for another. New Jersey's defense tonight, yeah, the goaltending, yeah, a little bit. Uh, we get a power play for the Devils. That's killed off. And then at 1418, during a delayed penalty, Washington scores Ovechkin with his first of the season. Carlson and Strom with the assists. Then with 221 left, the Caps get a power play. That's killed off, but it's 3-1 to one Washington after the first. Second period. A crazy first minute. He sure scores from Nason at 34 seconds, and then on a turnover from a sharp angle, he sure scores again, this time from Meyer, at 44 seconds. So suddenly, it's a 3-3 tie. Um, and I'm scrolling around games, and just think of my surprise when I went, that's 3-1, scroll back, as 3-3. Uh, Caps press at two and a half minutes. At 9.15, the Caps get their lead back. Mangiapane scores from Van Riemsdyk and Protus. Uh, that one, he goes around Markstrom on a net drive. And then at 12.23, Dylan Strom scores from Van Riemsdyk. So Trevor Van Riemsdyk with a couple of helpers tonight. And that restores the two-goal lead for Washington. It is five to three after two. Third period, the Devils press at two minutes. Uh, they then review to see if the Caps had a, go had a puck go across the line. The review says no. Uh, and then Mercer buries one on a three on two at 3.39. Heesher and Meyer with the assists. Shots are three to two. Washington at five minutes. The Devils press are kept to the outside. They're getting a lot of zone time. They're not getting enough shots on net, though. That's the problem uh, New Jersey's having at this point. But they would draw a power play and they score on it. Dougie Hamilton with the goal from Bratt and Meyer at 12.28. That ties the game at five. With 2.37 left, there's a power play for the Caps. That's killed off. We're going to overtime. Uh, the Caps control early. Bratt has a rush chance that saved. Myers robbed in close. And then at four minutes exactly on a two-on-one rush, Wilson buries one. Uh, Strom and Chikrin with the assists. Washington wins six to five in overtime. So the 80s magnet because it's 10 goals or more. Uh, for the Caps, they're now 3-1-1 one, and one in the season. New Jersey with the overtime loss drops to 5-2-1. Two, two, Shots on net, 17 to 10 Washington in the first, 10 to 8 New Jersey in the second, 9 to 8 New Jersey in the third, 4 to 2 Washington in the overtime. Final shots, 37 to 31 for the Caps. Power plays, Washington 0 for 2, New Jersey 1 for 2. The hits, 40 to 32 for Washington. Uh, Logan Thompson, 26 saves on 31 shots. And Markstrom had 31 saves on 37 shots. So, rough night for both goalies and both defenses, but entertaining night for the fans. And this is not the kind of game that Washington envisions themselves playing often. So you enjoy these when you, when you get them. All right, next up, Montreal and the Islanders. So two struggling teams coming into this one. It showed at points. Uh, Primo versus Varlamov. Siplikov fires one high on the rush. Uh, shots are two apiece at three and a half minutes. The Islanders would press halfway through the period. It's an Islanders game, so there were long stretches where there wasn't much to report on when I was scrolling between the games. Uh, Palmieri is a net drive this block. The Islanders draw a power play and they score on it. At 14.32, it is Horvat from Barzell and Dobson. Uh, he puts that one past the screen from the slot, so Primo never saw it. Uh, the Habs press to respond, but at 16.58 on a rush, Palmieri wires one. Uh, Dobson and Siplikov with the assists. And then with 8.8 .8 seconds left in the period, there's a Habs power play and they score on it before the period's out. At 1956, it's Caulfield from Matheson and Slavkovsky. 
So after one period of play, it is two to one for the Islanders. Early in the second, it becomes a tie game. Logan Mayu scores his first NHL goal at 59 seconds from Evans and Anderson. So that ties the game, and then the Habs press for the lead. That's the only shot on net, though, in the first five minutes of the second period. So, again, quiet game. Uh, strong Islanders forechecking. The Islanders would press at seven and a half minutes. The Habs get pinned down, but they're blocking the net pretty well at this stage. Shots are nine to three Islanders with eight and a half minutes left. With 148 left, the Islanders get a power play. So that rolls over into the third period where the Habs finish the kill. Just the 12 seconds left and all. Uh, the Islanders press after it's done. They then go back to the power play. So the Habs kill that one off. Uh, real lot of power plays for the Islanders tonight. Uh, the Habs press at five and a half minutes. We get another power play for the Islanders. That's killed off. Then there's another power play for the Islanders. That's killed off. And, I mean, that third period. And then Anders Lee scores five on five. He scores from Pajot and Pelic at 15-24. He buries a rebound and close at the net. The Habs press to respond, and they do. Caulfield with a second goal of the game. Uh, he scores from Slavkovsky and Suzuki at 17-50. Who else would it be from? And that ties the game at three to force overtime. In the overtime, Nelson has a shot that's caught and held. Uh, Dvorak's denied. The Islanders rush. We get a power play again for the Islanders. That's killed off again. And so we're off to a shootout. And the shootout was not decided early. Dobson in round nine gets the overtime slash shootout winner. And so the Islanders win four to three in the shootout. They go to two, one, and two with the win. With the loss, the Montreal Canadiens 2-3-1 and one on the season. Shots on net, 11-7 Montreal in the first, 12-7 Islanders in the second, 14-3 Islanders in the third. Both teams had three shots in the overtime. Final shots, 36-24 for the Islanders. Power plays, Montreal was 1-1, one for one, the Islanders 1-6. One for six. Uh, The hits, 30-28 Montreal. Primo, 33 saves on 36 shots. And Varlamov saves 21 out of 24 at the other end. All right, next up. Vancouver and Philly. So the Vancouver Canucks, obviously remembering how Philly uh, helped them open the season, and they want to do the same for Philly, but better. So it's Lankin in versus Arison. Lawton has a net feed that's picked off. Lots of early whistles. The Flyers press at two and a half minutes, but the shots are 4 nothing Vancouver four minutes into the game. Uh, we get a power play for Vancouver. There's a shorthanded two, three on two. Sanheim's denied there. They do kill that off. Uh, Brink has a net feed that's a near miss there. Halfway through the period, the shots are 10 to 1 Vancouver. We get a power play for Philly, that's killed off. And then, while the fans are chanting, Ref, you suck because they wanted a call, at 1609, Hoaglander scores to make them even happier. Uh, Pedersen and Garland with the assist. So, Elias Pedersen doesn't get the goal tonight, but he does get a nice helper on the Hoaglander goal. 305 left, the Flyers get a power play. There's a shorthanded rush chance by Pia Suter that saved. That power play is killed off. And the way the fans were treating that power play tonight for Philly, I started thinking, you know, the power play's been pretty good on the road. We may look at a team that struggles with their power play at home because it might get in their heads a little bit that the fans are going to turn. So we go to the second period. Uh, Flyers press at three minutes. The shots are three apiece five minutes in. Canucks press at seven and a half minutes. Eventually they score at eight minutes and 40 seconds. Besser buries a loose puck. Myers and DeBrusque with the assist. So Myers playing his 1,000th game. Kudos to him for that. And at 9 minutes and 30 seconds, the Canucks make it 3-0. Uh, Kiefer Sherwood with his first goal in Vancouver. Bluger with the assist there. It's 3-0. Uh, the Flyers press to respond, but the shots are 12-4 Vancouver with 7 minutes left. Uh, then there's a mask save on a rush by Konechny. The Flyers press with 3 minutes left, and that momentum switched pretty good in that, that second half of the period. We get a post for Konechny on a breakaway, just showing how, how close they were. Uh, there's late momentum for the Flyers. Uh, things are kind of pushy at the horn, and the Canucks come out of that with a power play. So that starts the third period. Uh, the Flyers get the best chances during that, so it's killed off. Good penalty kill by the Flyers. Then we get a power play for Philly. That's killed off as well. Uh, there's a near miss for Couturier at the net. The Flyers press at seven and a half minutes. Uh, the, the fans in Philadelphia getting frustrated tonight, too, that when the Canucks had the puck and they were ragging it, bringing it back, and setting things up, there was booing for that. Um, I would imagine being the home opener is probably pretty pricey too, right? Uh, so there's a near miss for Heinen on a turnover. And uh, yeah, the Canucks end up winning this one via a shutout. Lankinen's fourth career shutout and his first as a Canuck, of course. Vancouver goes to 2-1-2 and with the 3-0 victory. With the loss, Philadelphia 1-3-1. Rough start for the Flyers. Shots on that 15-7 Vancouver in the first, 13-12 Vancouver in the second, 7-4 Philly in the third. 
Final shots, 32-26 to 26 for the Canucks. Power plays, Vancouver 0 for 2, Philadelphia 0 for 3. Uh, the hits, 37-28 to 28 Vancouver. Lankinen saves all 26 shots for the shutout, thus the Tony the Tiger magnet. And Erson saved 29 out of 32. Honestly, with the way that scoring was tonight, I'm surprised that's the only shutout. That being said, I do need to change boards. Okay, so moving on to Minnesota and Columbus, uh, the second and final meeting already. And they're both playing their fifth game of the season tonight. So great scheduling. Uh, Gustafson versus Tarasov in this one. Columbus presses at two minutes. Faber has a shot that's blocked as the wild press. Columbus had the only shot on net in this game at eight and a half minutes. So, yeah, there was some slow games tonight. There absolutely were. Uh, we get a power play for the Wild. Columbus kills it off. They had two shots on that. Uh, the Wild press after it's done at 12.40. Uh, the Wild open the scoring. Rossi buries one from the slot on a turnover. Trennan and Felino with the assist there. Uh, Lauco is then denied on a fast break. Great play by Lauco. He gets denied. 50.1 seconds left. Columbus gets a power play. So it's 1-0 Minnesota after one. Uh, the power play rolls into the second period. The Wild do finish the kill. The shots are 2-0 Columbus at three and a half minutes. Uh, Bogosian has a rush chance to deflect wide. The Wild then score to make it 2-0. However, uh, it turns out it's goalie interference, so that is no goal. It stays 1-0. Uh, and that was one where he buried his own rebound in close. Doesn't matter. Uh, the Wild press at five and a half minutes. Uh, we get a four-minute power play for Columbus. Uh, the Wild did a really good job of killing that. Really aggressive penalty kill. Columbus presses with eight minutes left, but they're not getting to the net enough. They're not getting shots from close in enough. Uh, and then there's a press by the Wild to close it. So it stays 1-0 after two. Third period, Eric Sinek has a rush chance that's held. The Wild had the early jump. Then we get a delay game call. It becomes a Wild power play. It would become a 5-on-3. And at 2.52 during the 5-on-3, Kaprizov scores from Faber and Boldy because that's not fair. 5-on-3 with those guys on the ace is not fair. Uh, it was tic-tac-toe play on a face-off win. Then Columbus kills off the 5-on-4. The Wild are still doing a good job of blocking the path to the net. And at 8.26, Zuccarello adds some insurance. He scores from Kaprizov and Merrill. Uh, the Wild press with seven and a half minutes left. Eventually, Columbus breaks the goose egg. Uh, Chinikov, uh, he, he scores from Monaghan and Yurichek at 18.35. Columbus would press some more, looking for another one with the goalie pulled. But in the end, your final score is 3-1. Minnesota goes to 3-0-2 oh, on the season. Uh, Columbus 2-3 and three on the season. Shots on that, 14-4 Minnesota in the first, 12-6 Columbus in the second, 15-8 Minnesota in the third. Final shots, 35-24 for the Wild. Power plays, Minnesota 1-3, for three, Columbus 0-3. Oh the hits, 27-13 Columbus. Gustafson saves 23 out of 24. Tarasov saves 22 out of 25. All right, next up, uh, Carolina and St. Louis. This was a fun one. This was a very fun game, and I really am very surprised with the result, but hey, it was, it was a lot of fun to watch. Uh, Kachekov versus Hofer in this one. Early jump for the Blues, but uh, during a little press Carolina had going, uh, some good passing gets it to Svechnikov. He scores from Aho and Jarvis at 121. Canes press at three and a half minutes. The shots are six to one Carolina, five minutes in. Uh, there's a near miss for Cairo. Puck gets cleared out. We get a power play uh, for the Canes. Things are pushy then on a hold by Hofer. They end up killing that off. Uh, teams trade some rush chances. Things are pushy and punchy on a hold by Hofer. But I thought that was a great road period for Carolina. They're up one nothing. They gave St. Louis four shots in that first period. But they were only up by one. Second period, Canes resume control of the game. We then get a power play for the Blues. Thomas fires one high from the slot. Power play's killed off. No shots on net for St. Louis on that power play. Blues press after it's done. We get a post for Kasperi Kapanen. Kairou fires one high as the Blues press. The Blues go back to the power play. That's killed off, but then Matthew Joseph turns and wires one. The assist to Shen and Pierre-Olivier Joseph at 10:22. So brother from brother, I believe that's the first time they've ever combined on a goal at the NHL level. Uh, the Blues then look for the lead, and they find it at 11:35. Neighbors goes far corner pass to screen Balduke with the assist. Neighbors has now got a two-game goal-scoring streak going. He's getting it going. Uh, and then at 13:31, Holloway scores during another press by the Blues. Broberg and Matthew Joseph with the assists. It's 3-1 St. Louis. Uh, Thomas then fires one high on a break. But yeah, when the Saints go marching in, it had been played three times during that period. And it's 3-1. Uh, but then in the third, here's your comeback. Uh, we get a power play for the Canes. And at 139, Goss to spare with what they announced as being his 100th NHL goal. Aho and Svechnikov with the assists. 
And then at 257 on his own entry, Roslovic scores uh, from Drury and Slavin. So suddenly we've got a 3-3 tie. But the Blues don't fold. At 426, Kapanen scores from Neighbors and Pareko. Uh, and then the Blues look for another now that they're up by one. We get a power play for St. Louis. Carolina kills that off. Canes get a power play. That's killed off as well. The Blues go back to the power play. That's a no, so that's six minutes of your, your third period right there. The goalie pull happens with two minutes left. They're not able to generate a tying goal at all. St. Louis wins this one 4-3. to three. They go to 4-2 and two on the season. Carolina drops to 2-2. Two and two. Shots on net, 19-4 Carolina in the first. 11-8 St. Louis in the second. 13-4 Carolina in the third. Final shots, 40-19 to 19 for the Canes. Power plays Carolina 1 for 4, St. Louis 0 for 4. The hits 27 to 13 for St. Louis. Uh, Kachetkov saves 15 out of 19. Not a great night for Kachetkov, but it was a great night for Hofer. Uh, 37 saves on 40 shots. So Hofer makes a ton of saves, gets the win. And as I've been saying for a while now, he's a pretty good goaltender. All right, next up, uh, Buffalo and Chicago. So two teams near the bottom of the standings already. And here we go. Uh, Lucan in versus Soderblom in this one. Early press by the Sabres. We were a post away from 1-0 for Buffalo. Uh, Donato gets denied. Lucan in holds on to that one. The shots are only one apiece at four minutes, but it was exciting. Teams trade rushes, and eventually Thompson wires one on the rush. Paterka and Tuck with the assists at 8.39. Uh, Cousins, or not Cousins. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Hawks press at nine minutes. I get ahead of myself, and that's what happens. Uh, but the shots are 7-5 to five for the Hawks with 9 minutes left. And then at 11.31, Puck goes in off Malenstein's skate into the net. Well, he didn't kick it, so it counts. Uh, Clifton and Krebs with the assists. It's 2-0 for Buffalo. Sabres press for another. We get a power play for Buffalo. That's killed off. And then Chicago gets a power play. That's killed off as well. It's 2-0 for Buffalo after one. Second period, the shots are two apiece at three minutes. Uh, Reichel is robbed. Reichel might have had his best game of his NHL career tonight. Uh, fans call one, the referee doesn't, but then at 628 on the rush, Craig Smith scores his first of the season. Reichel and Jones with the assists. Sabres get a power play. Things get kind of pushy on a hold by Soderblom. That power play is killed off. The Hawks press at nine minutes. Murphy fires one wide on a three on two, and then Craig Smith scores the second of the period. Reichel and Murphy with the assists at 1248, and he buries the rebound there to tie the game. We then get a power play for the Sabres. That's killed off, but at 1837, it's Paterka. The best goal scorer right now for Buffalo, I swear, is Paterka. Thompson and Power with the assists, and it's a cross-ice pass by Thompson and buried by Paterka. It's 3-2 Buffalo after two. Third period, we get some rushing action going on back and forth here. Sabres press at four minutes. The shots are two apiece at five minutes. Not every part of this game was a beautiful masterpiece. Uh, the Hawks press at seven minutes. Cousins fires one high from the slot. Uh, the Hawks, they press with eight and a half minutes left. With five, 5.32 left, uh, there's some punching on a stoppage. Sabres come out of that with a power play. That's killed off. The fans then call one. The referee does not. Darlene takes a puck up high with 54.6 seconds left. The Hawks call a timeout. Whatever they discuss doesn't work at 19.34. McLeod scores, and Dylan Cousins has the assist to make your final score 4-2 for Buffalo. They go to 2-4-1 with the win. With the loss, Chicago 2-3-1. Shots on net favored Chicago the whole way. 12-9 in the first, 13-8 in the second, 12-5 in the third. Final shots, 37-22 for Chicago. Power plays Buffalo 0 for 4, Chicago 0 for 1. The hits 24-21 Buffalo. Lukanen saves 35 out of 37. His best game so far this young season. Soderblom 18 saves on 21 shots. All right, moving along to Boston and Utah. Uh, yeah, this game didn't have a lot going on for long stretches either. Again, scoring tonight, not that high. So four goals, seven goals, six goals, three goals, three goals. Yeah, it was a quiet night. Uh, outside of the 11-goal game between Washington and New Jersey. So in this one, it's Swayman versus Ingram. There's an early edge for Utah. The shots are 2 nothing for the home team four minutes in. We get a power play for Boston. That's killed off. The Bruins with some pressure at the half. Utah gets some pressure on the Boston net with five minutes left. Pasternak has a net feed that's picked off. The shots are 8-4 to four for Utah with three minutes left. With 1.10 left, Utah goes to the power play. Schmaltz fans on a slot shot that might have ended up going in. And then there's a shorthanded chance for Beecher that gets saved. It's scoreless after one. Second period, the Bruins finish the kill. The Bruins then press at two minutes. We end up getting two minutes of four on four out of some unpleasantness. 
Uh, Kepke has a rush chance that's saved. Utah has a three on two. That misfires. Shots are three to two for the hockey club at seven minutes. Uh, Zadorov goes to the box. Utah with a power play. It's just, it's it's something with Zadorov. You know you're going to get those penalties. It's just he his play has to offset those penalties as well. Um, so, there's the penalty to Zadorov. That power play is killed off. Three shots for Utah during that. Bruins press are kept to the outside. Things are pushy on a Swayman hold. Uh, and I wrote here, the game needs a goal. And then it happened. Uh, at 1249, Kepke goes five hole on a rush. Marshawn with the assist. Bruins then get a power play. There was a shorthanded post by Utah. So they had some posts tonight. They do kill that off. Utah presses with four minutes left. And then with 48.6 seconds left, Utah goes to the power play. So it's one nothing Boston after two. And it, it the game definitely picked up after that goal. Third period, the Bruins finish the kill. Uh, Coyle has a net drive that's blocked. We get a power play for Boston. That's killed off. Utah clears it out right after. Uh, shots are 5-2 to two for Boston in six and a half minutes. Utah ties the game. Offside challenge. Is it offside? Yes, it is. Uh, there's a press by Utah at eight and a half minutes. Cooley's denied on a fast break, and the game's really opening up in the third period. To, to my relief, it, it became a pretty good game in the third there. Uh, Bruins press with eight minutes left, but at 14.51, Kolyachonik gets a goal. He scores from Schmaltz and Keller. So, unlikely hero, but there he is. Uh, Utah pressed with three and a half minutes left, and they get this game to overtime. In the overtime, Utah controls early. They end up drawing a power play. They don't score during said power play, but right after it ends, like six seconds after it ends at 2.48, Kesselring scores to give the Utah Hockey Club the win. Uh, Michelli and Cooley with the assist. So Utah with the 2-1 overtime win goes to 4-1-1 one, one on the season. Boston with the overtime loss now 3-2-1 on the year. Uh, shots on net, 10-6 Utah in the first, 12-10 Utah in the second, 7 apiece in the third. And in the overtime, Utah had all three shots, including the winner. Final shots, 32-23 Utah. Power plays Boston 0-3, for 3, Utah 0-4. for 4. The hits 29-12 in favor of Boston. Swayman saves 30 out of 32. Ingram saved 22 out of 23. All right, last game of the night, Calgary and Seattle. So another game that had its slow patches, um, also known as most of the first period. Uh, Vladar versus Decord. It, you know what, though? I'm not complaining. It made it so much easier to track things tonight. Just be like, all right, so there aren't a bunch of goals. All right. Now on Tuesday, when it's 16 games, there's going to be a ton of goals. But I'm already I'm, I'm ahead. I know exactly how I'm going to deal with that night. Uh, there's an early power play for Seattle in this game. Power play's killed off. Kraken gets some pressure after. Uh, the Flames press at eight minutes. Uh, there's a near miss for Backlund and close. The shots are five to two. Calgary with seven minutes left. Uh, Montour is denied on a two on one rush. Kraken press with two minutes left. With 129 left though, the Flames get a power play and they score on it. Coleman scores from Backlund at 1951. He puts it past a screen from the slot. That's his first goal of the season. It's one nothing Calgary after the first. Second period, there's an early press by Calgary. They end up getting a power play, but Kadri gets a four-minute power play or four-minute penalty. I thought that he, the the stick was brought into the guy's face by the guy himself. So I think it was Will Borgen. And I thought, and when they reviewed it, I thought, okay, Kadri's going to come out of the box then because he didn't actually bring a stick up. The other guy smacked him in the face. with, But no, the, the penalty stood up. So there you go. Um, on that one, I thought... But why? So maybe we'll see an explanation. Maybe it's already out there. I don't. I don't care. Uh, but at any rate, no harm, no foul out of this. Uh, there's a shorthanded rush by Backlund that's defended, and Calgary kills that whole four-minute penalty off. Uh, Tolvanen has a rush chance that's caught and held. The shots are three apiece at six and a half minutes. The Flames press at eight minutes. Things are pushed on hold by Bladar. Uh, crack and draw power play, and then it becomes a five on three. You can't do that. So during the five on three, Stevenson scores from McCann at 12 24 to tie the game at one. The Flames kill off the five on four. There's pressure by Calgary with three minutes left. We're going to the third period tied at one. In the third, there's an early jump for Calgary. They end up getting a power play. Seattle kills that off. One shot allowed. Uh, the Flames press after it's done. The shots are only one apiece, though, six minutes into this. Uh, teams exchange rushes. Alexiak has a one-timer that's held. Vladar gives up the puck in that it hits the stanchion when he's going out to get it. But he recovers, and his defense helps cover for him, so everything's fine. Uh, uh, then there's too many flames on the ice, so the Kraken get a power play. 
Uh, Bjorkstrand has a slapper that's held that power play's killed off. Veneers had a great opportunity during that as well. It stays 1-1. Flames press with four and a half minutes left, but we knew where this was headed, didn't we? It's going overtime. There were four overtimes tonight. Uh, in overtime, Seattle controls early. The Flames get the puck back, and then they turn it over. And you can't do that in overtime, especially in your own zone. So Eberle makes him pay. He scores from Montour at 48 seconds. Seattle wins 2-1 to one in overtime. They go to 4-2 and two on the season. Calgary, this is their first loss, but it's not a regulation loss, so they're 4-0-1 on the year. Shots on net, 8-5 Calgary in the first, 7-5 Calgary in the second, 11-6 Seattle in the third. And Seattle had both shots in overtime, including the shot that matters, your winner. Final shots, 23-21 to 21 for Seattle. Power plays, Calgary 1 for 3, Seattle 1 for 6. Uh, the hits, 31-27 to 27 Calgary. Vladar saves 21 out of 23. And Decord, 20 saves on 21 shots. Neither goaltender was overly busy, but they were both pretty sharp. So there you go. You guys are all caught up on today's games. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe in the event you've not done so already. Thank you guys so much for all your support as always. I will talk to you again soon.